Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. Hello and welcome back. So this week, I want to talk about preparing to get healthy with MTHFR. Now, you'll recall that every week we're taking a new step on the MTHFR journey, and we're actually walking through it the way you would if you were working on healing. Now, I know everyone wants me to say, buy the first 5-LMTH product you see and gobble it down. But I just can't do that to you, because after you tried it, you would hate me forever, and with good reason. Jumping into 5-LMTHF before you're ready to do so can create a kind of nightmare scenario for your body, in which you've suddenly got a resource that's been in short supply, but none of the supportive structures around that resource. So toxins are dumping left and right but can't actually be eliminated, neurotransmitters are bobbing up and down like pole vaulters, and mood, energy, and sleep are desperately trying to keep up. In short, that way, there be dragons. The only real correlation I can make with the MTHFR journey is the process of pregnancy. You can try to rush it, but it's going to work out badly nine times out of ten. You've just got to go at the pace of the project and not get ahead of yourself. This requires laying a good foundation, even though that's the boring part. Believe me, in this case, we want to prevent the fireworks. So this week, let's talk about the prep work at the very baby beginnings of the MTHFR journey. This will take Three things. Number one is a symptom tracker. Number two is one heck of a pantry overhaul and some carbo loading. Enjoy that part. Number three is a talk with the family, significant others, and possibly your pet hamster. So let's start with number one. A symptom tracker is key here, even if you aren't a total data geek like I am. The goal is to establish your baseline in this week before you've made any big changes and while you're finishing all of the folic acid-enriched food in your pantry. That's the next part. For many of us MTHFR folks, folic acid-enriched food and supplements actually contribute to the symptom picture, but you never know it because it's always there in the background. So until you stop folic acid, it's just normal for you. At this point, You want to get a feel for your symptoms right now, because some of those might be caused by folic acid, and this will make things so much easier down the road. Your future self is going to thank you. So let's do a quick rundown of how to use a symptom tracker. This is something you can start today. First off, there's a free symptom tracker available for download at tohealthwiththat.com. Just sign up for the email list, and it's yours along with a couple of other goodies. There's also loads of symptom tracking apps if you prefer to use your phone or whatever. So make a list of all the symptoms you notice on a daily basis, things like brain fog or fatigue or whatever it is that's your normal. Also, the ones that show up every now and then, like maybe headaches or cramps. Doesn't matter if you think they're related to MTHFR or not. Just add them to the list. Every day, rate each symptom on a scale from 0 to 10. If you're not experiencing that symptom, it's a zero. If it's the worst it could possibly be, it's a 10. What we're trying to find is your quote-unquote normal. The goal here for future self is to be able to tell when you're moving forward and when a change has been worth it. Also, when it hasn't been worth it or, even worse, when it's pushing you backwards or causing symptoms. Responses to different supplements are incredibly varied with MTHFR. And so it's really important to keep track of what works for you, because there isn't any one-size-fits-all-this-works-for-everybody plan. What we want is to get a clear picture of you right now. That is because next week, we're going to make a big change. Next week, we'll take all of the synthetic folic acid out of your diet and supplements. Taking synthetic folic acid out of your life has to happen with MTHFR. There's really only one study done in this area, which is a tiny amount of data, but it's very compelling and essentially indicates that taking folic acid for people with MTHFR mutation or taking too much folic acid for everyone else 
actually blocks the pathway it's supposed to help. So instead of converting into the active form of folate, folic acid blocks up the conversion pathway and gets in the way of an already compromised enzyme pathway. At least it's already compromised for MTHFR folks. The bottom line is that with an MTHFR polymorphism, taking folic acid makes your symptoms and your functional folate deficiency worse. So this week, to prepare for that pretty major step, I want you to enjoy your bread and pasta. Wheat products are the most commonly fortified foods globally, and they've been fortified with folic acid as a public health measure to prevent birth defects. In that regard, it's highly successful. It's just not the best thing for MTHFR folks. I do want to say, however, that if it's a choice between zero folate at all and synthetic folic acid, then the synthetic folic acid still wins. Some folate is better than none in a starvation situation, even if it's the worst possible form. I am assuming, and this is maybe a big assumption, but I am assuming that nobody listening to this podcast or reading this blog post is in a starvation situation. So for you, it's best to avoid folic acid as completely as possible. If you want to learn more about this, go back to Season 1, Episode 9, this vitamin could be hurting you. Or there's a link in the current show notes as well. When you're shopping for next week, if you want bread, it's going to have to be either gluten-free, which doesn't have wheat and is therefore generally not fortified, or organic whole wheat, which they can't tamper with to get an organic certification. If it says folic acid or folate anywhere on the label, then it has added folic acid and you should exclude it. In good news, gluten-free and organic options have come a long way, and there's many more of them. In bad news, the U.S. recently extended their fortification program to include corn products as well. So, check your labels. Also, if you happen to be outside of North America, double-check the regulations in your own country. In most places, wheat is the most commonly fortified food. It's truly important to get the folic acid out of your diet as completely as possible because for many people, it's actually causing symptoms. These could include depression, anxiety, inflammatory conditions like pain, or overarching issues like fatigue or insomnia. And you would never know unless you took it out and symptom dragged. Also, check your vitamins, supplements, energy bars, meal replacement powders, energy drinks, birth control pills, and prescriptions. If your doctor has given you a prescription that includes folic acid, Talk with them before you make any changes and find an alternative that'll work better for you, especially if you're on an antifolate agent such as methotrexate. Remember, you're not actually starting the elimination this week. You're just doing the prep work. Clear out the pantry. Finish your bread, finish your pasta so it isn't wasted. Check your vitamins, supplements, and prescriptions. Talk with your practitioners or doctors and make sure you are ready for a transition. I don't know if anybody remembers the movie Office Space, but what we're doing here is planning to plan. If you're looking for a free resource about foods commonly fortified, then there's one in the MTHFR library in Genetic Rockstars, our MTHFR community. It also has some ideas for MTHFR safe substitutions, and you can find that at community.tohealthwiththat.com. The third thing that's probably a good idea this week is talking to the people close to you. This is a process, and you may need some support through it. You may also need to tell people why your favorite brunch place is off the menu for a while. Because avoiding wheat products is super strange at first, and culturally, it's a huge commitment. We make everything out of wheat. Like, everything. So this is the hardest change you'll ever have to make on this entire journey. I am so glad I warmed this season up with the hardest thing I'll be asking you to do. That's great marketing on my part. If any of you stay with me, next week we'll actually start taking folic acid out of your life. After that, I should have eliminated my entire audience. So thank you so much for listening, and I really hope you stick around for all of this. 